Hey guys, day 15, periodic trends. Welcome back. We'll talk about the periodic trends and we'll talk about uh, some of the things with the periodic table that we know and some, and some behavior predictors. So let's dive into the periodic trend. So we're going to talk about periodic properties. Right? So the chemical and physical properties of the elements right depend upon their electron configurations and therefore you would expect them to vary in a systematic way throughout the table. All right, so what are these trends? Well, we have uh, size, atomic size or radius, right? Ion size or radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, metallic character, and density. So let's write these down. So they would be atom and ion size. All right, we have ionization energy. Electron affinity, metallic character, density. All right. So if we look at these major divisions of the table, here's what we got, right? Those are your electron configurations, and those are some of the elements pictured and so you see the line here this line right here the stairs there's our stairs and it separates the metals from the non-metals right so we have the metals over here and the non-metals okay now the metalloids can be either or right and we'll kind of see that they can behave as a metal or a non-metal um, and so we'll go from there. As you look at strontium here, the outside's all oxidized. The inside, like rusted, so to speak, but it's not rust because rust is specifically iron, three oxide. But it's all oxidized, and that's what strontium in that little silver part looks like. They all look nice and silver. Chromium, gold, copper, there's lead. Silicon's kind of nice. Arsenic, you know, carb, uh, there's carbon is right there. Uh, that's not carbon. That's carbon. That's sulfur. Bromine's a liquid, brown liquid. Iodine. It's a, like a purple solid, but it vaporizes. It sublimes pretty easily. All right, so let's dive into these. Atomic size, right? So we can usually, right, measure. the covalent or metallic radius using x-ray crystallography or some type of spectroscopy we shine light okay so here are the trends, okay? And some trends make sense and some won't for a second. So hydrogen is smaller than lithium, lithium smaller than sodium, sodium smaller than potassium, potassium smaller than rubidium. So as we go down, 
as we go down, you got helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon. Like, as we go down, they're almost always bigger. I'm sure we can find an exception. But they're all, right? They're almost all, yeah, there we go. Aluminum is bigger than gallium. Okay? But that's the trend. Again, so when we talk about periodic trends, let's take a step back. We just want to know the general trend. There's always going to be exception to the trends. Okay? For example, right? When I'm recording this now, it's the last day of August. September's going to come. Tomorrow. Right? And pretty soon with September, starts coming fall stuff. Right? And pumpkin flavored stuff. Pumpkin spice comes out. Well, this person you're listening to does not participate in any pumpkin spice anything. Okay? That doesn't mean... At Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts or any of these other places just because I don't participate in the trend doesn't mean they're not going to start selling pumpkin spice everything because it makes the money right and there's enough people who follow the trend all right another fashion trends I don't follow fashion trends I have dress clothes and I have like workout clothes and that's pretty much it all right I don't have much other clothes I don't have just I mean, I dress, formal dress, casual dress, because they're very similar, and then, right, that's it, workout clothes. I don't really have much in between, all right? So, I don't follow many fashion trends. Some people follow a lot of fashion trends, and again, if you do, that's great. If you don't, that's great too. So, not everything follows the trends. Again, I'm deciding to follow trends or not, but these atoms, these, there are trends, that doesn't mean they're it's a universal like this is definitely oh, cause, right what, what do you mean aluminum is bigger than gallium I thought they got bigger as they went down well they do aluminum just doesn't follow the trend so just remember that all right it's a trend not an absolute must okay so that means that when pumpkin stuff comes out not everybody has to go to Starbucks to get uh, uh, pumpkin spice whatever Okay, you don't have to do that. Now, maybe you are going to do that. Great. Either way, right? So, same thing with here. Not everything follows the trend. So, going back to the trend here, the atom size, as we go down the table, it makes a lot of sense that we get bigger. So, it makes sense that chlorine is bigger than fluorine, right? That bromine is bigger than chlorine because we're, we're adding electron energy levels, right? Go to N equals 2, to N equals 3, to N equals 4. Right? We're getting bigger and bigger. We're getting heavier. Makes total sense. What's weird is that lithium here is roughly half the size, I'm sorry, is, double, is more than double the size of neon. And sodium is double the size of argon. Right? Almost. That's that's what's weird, right? Why are we getting so lithium has three protons, three electrons, and weighs seven grams per mole. Neon has ten protons, ten neutrons, ten electrons, and weighs twenty grams per mole. So it's basically three times as heavy. Neon's three times as heavy as lithium, but half the size. That's weird. Right? Same thing with sodium. Sodium weighs 23. Argon weighs 40. So, sodium is half the mass of argon. And argon is uh, half the size of sodium. That's so weird. Right? You would think that that would be the opposite. But it's not. So, what the heck is going on? Right? Why are we getting smaller as we go across the periodic table? Right? Because... This is the way, this, this is just graphed, all right? So, we have this shielding and effective nuclear charge. Okay. So, I'm going to draw the 1S. Oh, it's this one. Hopefully, I can do this correctly. Perfect. So, there's my 1S. There's my 1S shell, so to speak. Well, if we remember the electrons... They're not just going around really, really slow, right? They're going around trillions of time in a second, right? To make an almost electron wall, so to speak, right? Like helicopter rotors, but many, many times faster, right? 
okay probably more than a million times faster so it's no matter what this pink like circle here this is electron always and so this guy right here no matter what it feels the electrons right the the core electrons the valence electrons feel the core electrons all right and so if you know coulomb's law The force of attraction is equal to um, 1 over 4 pi times the permeability of free space. Those are constants. Charge 1 multiplied by charge 2 all over the radius. How far apart those charges are. All right. And so what happens here is that 2s1 electron for lithium is being shielded. Right. It's being screened away from the nucleus so it doesn't really feel the nucleus as much as the um, core electrons and it's kind of like this way if you ever been in, like played a sports or did a whatever and you whatever something where somebody in the middle of the huddle was talking right without a megaphone or amplified sound and people were huddled around that person you know whether listening to directions motivational speech whatever everybody's huddled around the people on the outside of the huddle sometimes aren't as involved as the people in the inside of the huddle right if you're on the outside of the huddle sometimes you can't even hear the coach or the speaker okay and so you can hardly pay attention in the inside if you're right there you get eye contact everything it's you're in your face it's great All right if you're into it of course but the right what happens for the electrons, just like in human behavior, if we're kind of far away, we're kind of like not paying attention. We're right up close. A lot of times we're paying more attention. All right. The electron is being shielded and screened, so it's not that force of attraction is less than uh, the core electrons, so that valence electron is further out. But as we add more electrons, as I get this to another electron, and it's 4 plus and another electron and it's five plus these charges are increasing which increases the force which makes the radius go down which increases the force so as we add more and more electrons right the atom is going to collapse on itself because there's more and more force of attraction right and so the three electrons or the sorry the two s and two p electrons keep getting closer and closer to the nucleus Right now, not a huge, huge amount, but you know, peak meters. These are all peak meters, right? You know, we got 85 peak meters to 77 peak meters to 70 peak meters, right? And so they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until we finally have neon, where we have 10 electrons and 10 protons, right? And then we go to sodium, where you get the 3s1 electron. And that 3s1 electron is way out there now, being screened or shielded. Right, so that's why group one, that one valence electron's out kind of by itself, so it's the electron takes up most of the volume, right? So it's way out there. Whereas in group 18, those p electrons are really, really close, right? Because they're being pulled in, because there's a lot more protons and electrons in the same region of space, same energy level. So that's why uh, the it's weird as we get smaller as we go to the right. So that's atomic radius so who's the biggest francium is the biggest who's the smallest helium is the smallest all right that's even smaller than hydrogen by a couple picometers ions now ions are a little bit different right so remember electrons are the volume right so cations remove electrons right because they're positive that means we remove volume so cations are smaller anions gain electrons so they gain volume they're negative so they are larger and th this is a huge difference as you can see lithium to lithium plus I go from 150 picometers to 60 picometers that's huge and the more electrons I lose the smaller I get and the more electrons I gain the bigger I get 
So beryllium to beryllium 2 plus, 112 to 31. Boron to boron 3 plus, 20, 85 to 23. That, these are huge changes. Whereas anions, they gain, oxygen gaining two electrons, doubles in size. Fluorine gaining an electron, almost doubles in size. Right? That's a huge increase. All right? So that's the ions. Okay? Right? And so as we go down, right, they get much bigger and much smaller. Right? So that's kind of neat. Okay? That's kind of neat. So that's ion size. Then we got electron affinity. No, I missed ionization energy. Where's ionization energy at? Ah, there it is. Ionization energy. So this is the energy required to remove an electron from from an isolated atom or ion in the gas phase or gas state. Okay, and it's stepwise. So if I have aluminum, aluminum plus, aluminum two plus, aluminum three plus. So this would be the first, right? This would be the second, third, right? Does that makes sense. So that's the first ionization energy going. So going here, it's the first. There's the second, there's the third, okay? And just so you know, we call it IE1, IE2, IE3. And just so we know, IE2 is always larger than IE1. It's always, right? And so here's the deal. Let's say you had three $1 bills, and you were at a vending machine, and you only wanted a $1 drink. Right? You have a friend. Doesn't have any money. Oh, yeah, I got you, bud. Okay? Not, but you have two friends. A little harder to give up that second dollar. You have three friends. That third one's, all of a sudden, now you're not getting your drink. Right? And so it's tough. Each time to give up that dollar, right, is harder. So same thing with the electrons. Because we go from zero to plus one to plus two plus three. So it's harder to remove each additional electron. So trends, here's your trends, right? Hardest to remove, easiest to remove. All right, and so now again, human behavior has nothing to do with this, but most of us could successfully, especially if we put the phone down, watch one kid, one five-year-old boy, one right, four-year-old boy or three-year-old boy, we could do that. Or girl, they get into trouble too. All right, we could handle one. All right, what about 55 four-year-olds? How many of them could be be lost before you even noticed? Right, because that's chaos. Right, that would be extreme chaos. All right. No matter how good you are, 55, especially if it was like outside with no fence, that'd be a dangerous situation, All right? You'd have two of them and, you know, across the street, you'd have two of them, you know, on top of cars, two of them playing with a venomous snake, it'd be bad, right? It'd be really bad, okay? You'd have some go missing, you wouldn't even know, right? Because there's so many issues you'd have to deal with, so many bathroom breaks, so many, nuts, right? Very easy to remove one. So, when you are 55 protons and 55 electrons, much easier to remove an electron than it is if you have one proton and one electron. All right? Now, the noble gases are very hard. It's very hard to take electrons away from them. Okay? But there's always energy required to remove an electron. Okay? There's always energy required. Now, I want to point something out here. And this is great. Right there and right there. Right there and right there. Um, it's right there and right there. It's right there and right there. So wherever we highlighted, what did I highlight? We have 
you know, S2 to P1, P3 to P4. Does that make sense? All right, so we have full, and we have half full orbitals. All right, so we have full and half full orbitals because we got lithium and then um, beryllium, boron, All right? Then we have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. So the half full p orbitals. It's harder to remove an electron from than P4. That's not half full. That's kind of nice to know, right? That our, I mean, we said that half full orbitals and full orbitals are more stable. This shows us data that help, goes aligned with that, which is great. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is, if you look at sodium and magnesium here, here's the big jump. If you notice, there's a big jump right there and a big jump right there. Right, so I can easily hop on, but then I can't make the next one. Here I can hop, hop, and I can't make the next one. Right, so the first ionization. So these two are valence. This is a core. This one's valence. These two are core. Right, they're a big jump. Okay, big jump. And I, I use money all the time in class to talk about this. Right. If I needed to spend $500, I could probably do that without being, you know, having a big, huge debate with my wife. I mean, think about that. If I went to Sam's Club, Target, the grocery store, I could handle that. That makes sense. That's not unreasonable there, right? Some people go, going to Target's an actual addiction. All right. Now, if I went and spent $4,500, that's a different situation. Little talk need to be, you know, what, what accounts are coming out of all that fun stuff needs to happen. Hopefully, if you're married, you do do that, you know. Okay, same, you know. I mean, think about it $1,450. That's most households have that budget, right? So, if you're going to pay your mortgage, your electric bill, your water bill, um, you know, car insurance, cell phone, right, groceries, most people are getting close to fifteen hundred dollars in a month like that's not unreasonable the average mortgage is a thousand so let's say you're, you're living really cheap at five hundred dollars right cell phone let's say it's fifty dollars right your groceries for a week you know let's say it's a hundred dollars or food for a hundred dollars right car some of you guys have car payments that are amazing right but let's say it's only a three hundred dollar car payment two hundred dollars insurance that's another five hundred dollars right you, you can get up there pretty quickly Whatever it is, right? But seven thousand is a little bit different. All right. All right. So it's a big step. You're looking for the big step. So that's ionization energy. All right. And you can look the difference here between valence and core. So this line represents the difference, the crossover from valence to core. And you can see the huge difference: fourteen fifty to four thousand, twenty-seven hundred to seven thousand, four thousand to eleven thousand, six thousand to sixteen thousand. 8,000 to 22,000, 11 to 27, right? So that's what we're talking about there. The next trend is electron affinity. And this is the energy change associated with the gaining of an electron by an atom in its gas state. And it's usually negative for energy released. So Cl gas plus an electron going to Cl minus gas, right? The energy change depends on how much all right, chlorine wants to keep the electron.
So how much does chlorine want to keep the electron? Is That's the question. Now we probably know it wants to keep it. All right. And so if you look, uh, the normal gases are all positive. They don't want any electrons. Right? Fluorine, chlorine, they're negative numbers. Nitrogen's kind of, you know, the first one's positive. It doesn't, it's pretty, nitrogen gas is pretty stable. Right? And so some of these have, you know, even potassium has a little bit energy released. All right? But the trend goes, fluorine's high, and it goes down down that way that's the trend okay all right that's just electron affinity that's the energy change associated with the gaining of an atom or electron for an atom then we got metallic character and metallic character all this is is how easy it is to remove B remove an electron from an atom. Very similar to ionization energy. All right, so who's the most metallic? Where's the least? Least helium, francium, most. Okay, there's the most metallic, least metallic. Okay, that's just uh, what it, well, how it is. Okay, how easy it is to remove. And there's a nice picture. Do I have that picture? Oh, I don't have that picture. There's a nice picture in the textbook that shows it goes nitrogen's a gas, colorless, and phosphorus is this powder, arsenic's this like dull, you know, mineral, and then antimony's starting to get shiny and crystally, and then bismuth is crystal. And then it shows you that sodium metal is in period three, sodium's really nice shiny metal, then magnesium's metal, aluminum's metal, silicon's metallic looking, phosphorus obviously is not, and sulfur's, you know, not at all metal, and then chlorine's a gas. So the metal, right, it just how easy it looks metallic. That doesn't mean it's strong, right? So just being a metal doesn't mean it's like amazingly strong. You can cut sodium and potassium with a butter knife. Right? Magnesium you can bend really easily. Alright. Okay, gold is pretty soft. So it just because they're metal doesn't mean it's super strong. Okay. But that that's the trend. The last trend is density. And I don't have a picture of it, but density as you go down, your density goes up. Right? As you get heavier, not much more big not bigger. So density increases as you go down. And that's it. So that would be the periodic trends. Again, they're trends. So don't get all caught up if something doesn't follow the trend, because not everything's going to follow the trend. Right? Just like if, I don't know, some trend, fashion trend comes out, I'm probably not going to follow it. Okay? And that's okay. Some fashion trend might come out, and you might follow it. And that's great too. Right? So just they're trends. These are trends. In general, francium is the most metallic. That doesn't mean there's not a, right, you know, zirconium might be more or less metallic than titanium. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up, all right? But I know the general trend that fluorine is not metallic and francium is, all right? So hopefully that helped. Hopefully that's clear, and we'll see you next time.